hey girl hey welcome back to my channel it's your girl misha thank you guys for joining me yet again for another review we are back y'all with a brand new review for the real housewives of potomac season nine episode four if you are new here then welcome i give lighthearted reviews with a little bit of laughter and a little bit of shade and a whole lot of detail if you're back for a second or third time then welcome back y'all please don't hesitate to like comment and subscribe to the channel share with a friend hit that notification bell so that you will be updated each and every time i upload a video now child let's get into it if we gonna get into it so when the episode first opens up karen is still in the car with mia not talking about it mia's like well this is not your first time but i appreciate you saying you were in the wrong karen was like whoa whoa whoa, whoa, whoa. i didn't say i was in the wrong <laughs> now y'all know how karen is karen talking about you know what? This right here will show me who my real friends are. Ma'am, 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 ma'am. What the hell are you talking about? Why do they have to stick beside you doing the wrong thing? How many episodes we gonna go through this now, Kern? How many? Oh, and Wendy in them's car. Jackie is telling them, or Jacqueline, is telling them that Karen is mad that she brought up her drunk dialing. Wendy was like, uh, yeah, she's not here to defend herself. So there's that. I felt like that was Wendy being real. Cause you know, she could have been like, oh, okay, Giz are kind of cool with me now. Jacqueline girl, who are you really? So let's talk about Karen, but she did not. Okay. And that's, I feel like that's going to be very important later on in the season. Over in Ashley's car is Ashley, Jazzy and Kay. In Ashley's car, Jazzy and Kiana are talking about relationships. Ashley, everybody on mute. Honey, she ain't got nothing to offer to the conversation. Just sitting in the back like she the new one. I said, baby, have they been holding the flute or have you? Why do you have nothing to say? So Kiana said that she works with her man. Her spa can basically, basically run itself. But she did say that her man called her his employee last week. Oh, baby, it's time to separate. It's time to separate from the relationship from the work relationship. Mm -mm, absolutely not. Uh, Ashley, this is where you need to chime in and tell her how you were arguing out in front of the Thunder Down Under restaurant that you and Michael used to have. Like, you really need to tell her you and Mr. Burns were out there arguing about that damn kangaroo and whatever else y'all was selling up in there. That's when you need to tell her she needs to separate the two. Moving forward. Back in Giselle and Wendy's car, Wendy is asking Giselle how she is with Karen. Giselle is still upset. Jacqueline said to Wendy, girl, you don't got beef with nobody. Child, for the first time in years, <laughs> she can finally breathe. I know she like, oh, thank God, because I have been having a rough few seasons. So now everybody else can get to fighting. Wendy then brings up the secret competition between Jazzy and Jacqueline to be Mia's best friend. Okay, it's the battle of the Jays. So on the plane, some sidekick conversation was being had. Jacqueline says she heard Jazzy call her Mia's sidekick. I mean, she ain't wrong. It's giving Thelma and Louise, Laverne and Shirley, Wren and Stimpy, Beavis and Butthead. It's giving that. <laughs> it's giving that. <laughs> Y'all remember Beavis and Butthead? Ooh, child. Mm -mm -mm. That's when MTV was good. Do you hear me? It would go from Beavis to Butthead over to Daria. And then when it got through with Daria, we might hit them with the real world. And then they might bring in road rules every now and again. But now MTV is like basically non-existent. And remember MTV spring break. Okay, I'm getting off track. I'm getting off track. But I could really go back down memory lane. But now all they play is ridiculousness. And the whole damn station is ridiculousness. But anywho, so I mean, girl, that's what you're giving. Okay, just, she just stayed in the obvious. Back in Mia's car, they're trying to call Stacy and see where she is, but they she didn't answer. So then Mia says, yeah, you know, Stacy's not that interesting. I really don't like the whole valley girl persona. I can't get with that. Girl, what? So she has to come in lying and throwing drinks to be interesting? Girl, bye. So what you're trying to say is you want less clueless and more P Valley like you <laughs> down in the valley where the girls get naked because we all know that's what you like okay that's your judge so you want Stacy to be exactly like you she's different and that is okay I don't know it's just something about Mia just gives me high school mean girl wanna be this wanna be that I just can't get with Mia I am not a Mia fan and that's just that on that so they get to the house right they get to Mia's manor and I was like, girl, you better not let Kenya hear you talking about Mia's manner. Because, you know, she got more man over there in her name, child. So they go to find their rooms. In true Giselle fashion, she's mad about the fact that 
she asked to share a restroom. Now, she wasn't so mad. It was more so Karen. She was like, girl, I'm going to go pee. Okay, so whatever you're going to do, that's what you're going to do. She asked to share a toilet with Karen, and Karen is not here for it. Y'all better be glad it's not Ashley hosting the trip. Okay, you should be used to this by now. At least you're not in the attic, and y'all have AC. Because that first cash trip that y'all had down to Ashley's beach house, girl, y'all didn't even have air. So everyone is looking for their rooms, and Jacqueline is upset at her room or lack thereof. But baby, when they got to Kiarna and Stacy's room, and it was looking like an episode of Salute Your Shorts with all these damn bunk beds. Oh, baby, I would have been on the I-10 by 10. I don't know if it's an I-10 down there, but I would have been on it. <laughs> you got me on a plane to get in a bunk bed. I am grown. So there is no way that I would sleep in no sleepaway camp bunk beds. There's just no way, baby. That's just the ultimate disrespect. Well, maybe that's just me. I don't like that because I'm very particular about my accommodations. I don't like no Motel 6. Don't leave no damn light on for me. I want to be somewhere where I am comfortable. And that would not work for me. After nine seasons, we are still doing bunk beds. Girl, anyway. So Wendy got the room that was all decorated for her 40th birthday. I thought that was a nice touch. She deserves to be celebrated because baby, they iced her out for many seasons. So she's happy now. Now, you could tell that Giselle was pretending that she was happy about the whole situation, but I was looking at her face, and you could see that she was just like, oh, child, let's just get through the scene. I feel like this season, Giselle is showing up to work. You know how, and what I mean by that is, she was more engaged in previous seasons because she was pulling puppet strings and starting all types of mess. This season, she's just like, I'm supposed to be here at 4 o'clock. I am here. I am clocking out. I am going home. You heifers are coworkers. That's what it was giving me. But maybe that's just me. Okay. And uh, Wendy, that lady still don't like you for real. But happy birthday, girl. Moving forward. Child, over on the other side, Mia got Jacqueline sleeping head to foot with her. I said, baby, not child in the same room. What is going on? So then Stacy finally arrives. Hey, girl. Everybody's sitting around. Giselle is telling them that she's leaving that night because in the morning, she has to go to her daughter's cap and gown ceremony. And she's not going to be able to be there for the duration of tonight. And I would have just come afterwards. Jacqueline and Jazzy are discussing her sidekick comment. So Jacqueline getting all up, making a scene, talking about, I'm far from a sidekick. I'm this, I'm that. And Jazzy was like, yeah, from the neck up. Yeah, cool. Yep, sure are. <laughs> I said, old child. Mm -mm -mm. It was so cringy. I was like, Jacqueline, please sit down. Girl, just have a seat. So the heifer is up twirling around or whatever. Twirl, twirl, twirl. Okay, girl. They are fussing back and forth and forth and back. Jazzy then says that she told Mia that she will have a great trip because now she has an even better sidekick. What is going on? And why would anyone want to be up under old line Mia? Just why? So then Karen said Jacqueline is obsessed with Mia and they are so weird to me. I don't know if it's anybody else, but they just give me this weird vibe. Like Jacqueline is very territorial and I'm not sure why, which is probably why everything blew up when her and Mia were getting into it that one season. It's just weird. So Jazzy is telling Jacqueline, girl, it was a joke. Okay. And I was just sitting there looking at the screen thinking to myself, what is even being talked about? What am I watching? <laughs> like what is happening? Mia tells them, okay, at seven o'clock, the boat's going to come take us on a tour. And my other friends are also coming for dinner. Well, baby, what'd she say that for? Jacqueline don't like the other friends either. Stacy said, girl, you got a lot of beef with everybody. She sure does. I would be afraid of a friend like that. Baby, don't single black female me. I don't like nobody that likes me too, 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 too much. Like, I want you, we cool. But baby, don't try to skin me and wear me as a coat. So then Karen pipes up and says that Jacqueline is not a good friend. So the phone call that Jacqueline had said at the table about drunk dialing, basically Karen said that that was her asking for advice and nobody was drunk. Well, somebody lying. And I don't know who it is, but somebody is lying. Giselle then chimes in and she's like, well, I don't think she was trying to be malicious or mean. Giselle, please. It definitely was her saying that she drunk dialed her. She know exactly what she was saying when she said it. How is that not malicious? If you know. Now, I know Karen needs to own up and take accountability and all that jazz. But if you know that I am being tried or whatever is happening, 
You've seen it all over the news, in the paper, on the blogs, and you know that I have a situation that involves drinking. Then you come sit at a table and try to be shady and say, yeah, she drunk dialed me. How is that not being malicious? I don't get it. Girl, anyway, so Karen told her straight up, you're lying and this is why I don't with you. Jacqueline told her, okay, that's okay, but you are deflecting. Now she has been deflecting, but did she drunk dial you or not? Because this is why I think that Jacqueline may be lying. Because if Karen drunk dialed you, this is where you put it on the table. See, this is why you will not get a flute, Jacqueline. Because this is the moment where you say, girl, yes, you did. And you pull out the receipt. You don't sit there like, well, I'm I, no, well, whatever, girl. You don't have to talk to me. Well, it's whatever. No, that's not how this works. Now they're going back and forth and forth and back. Now she's telling Jacqueline to shut up. Karen, you sure are cussing and getting upset. It reminds me of when Sharice was on here and you were mad at her. So what's really the truth? I think both of y'all got a little lying problem, but maybe that's just me. Jacqueline starts crying. And I'm talking about that's not who I am. It's just not who I am. Karen said, Jacqueline can cry until the cows come home. I'm not buying it. <laughs> I'm wondering what she was crying for. I said, girl, what you crying for? You let me gas you up to say it. Now stand on it. I'm not buying the fake tears either. I'm sorry. I'm with Karen. Girl, suck it up, buttercup. I don't care nothing about that. So Giselle starts talking about, come on, Karen. Don't be mean to her. Come on, Karen. Now, since when are you the moral compass? Since when do you care about people tearing up and crying? Oh, I guess it's just select people, child. I guess so. Moving forward. So after that little display that nobody cared about, they get ready for dinner. And how I know Jacqueline was faking because child them tears dried right on up. So Wendy pulls Jacqueline to the side. Now, baby, this had me hollering. Wendy said, hey, girl, these two days, they're about me. <laughs> Baby, the way I hollered, because Wendy was so serious, like, girl, I don't know what y'all fussing about, but don't do that right now. Okay, I'm turning 40. Okay, so y'all really need to shut up because this is my trip, and that's just that on that. I said, baby, this is a mess. So then they go and take Stacy to see the room. Okay, now they're taking her to see the room. They're thinking they're about to get a moment, and it backfired because she was actually happy about it. She said, a bunk bed? Oh my gosh. She has such a positive outlook on it, which was actually refreshing. I loved her response. I really did because she said she wanted a bunk bed when she was younger and she never got one. She's like a girl's trip and a bunk bed. Baby, she was happy. Okay. Now that's what y'all get. Y'all thought y'all were going to get a moment and Stacy gave y'all nothing. I love that she was so positive and her outlook was different. She even changed Kiana's mind because she said, girl, if she's that excited and she's being so positive about it, then maybe I should be positive too. I know that's right. Meanwhile, Jazzy is in the other room telling Jacqueline that she has on an ugly outfit. <laughs> what is going on? So Jazzy is like, girl, I don't like that outfit. That outfit is ugly, but you're pretty nonetheless. Outside, Ashley is FaceTiming her event coordinator because she's picking up odd jobs, honey. I don't know if she's on uh, Thumbtack or whatever they be doing, honey, when you're picking up gigs. She's doing these hosting gigs to stay afloat, or so she wants us to believe, knowing dang on well that Michael is still footing the bill and she ain't fooling me. But if you want to play this game, Ashley, let's play it. And clean that nasty phone. Girl, when they paying that camera to that phone, I said, this phone, no, it's nasty. Girl, get you a little wipe and wipe that phone down. You've been on here nine seasons and phone just as nasty as you just came on. Girl, get yourself together. Moving forward. Over on the other side, we see little rumblings down with the captions that Jacqueline and Mia were in there talking about Karen being upset. Look, I get it. I get it. Karen definitely deflects, but Jacqueline, you were being messy. So I don't know why you sit here acting confused. She's mad at me. Girl, you know what you were doing. You shouldn't let Mia be your, well, you're her sidekick, but you should not let Mia tell you what to say and what to do and how to do it. Cause now you're in this situation and you want to talk about it. That's your business. So everybody's getting ready for dinner, right? And Karen and Stacy were done first. So they're sitting outside. Stacy is telling Karen, you know, I'm just really going through something right now. I'm afraid to tell Arabella about the divorce and it's happening and I'm just so nervous because she's only eight and she doesn't know. Now, the thing is, she may not know as far as divorce is concerned, but kids know when the parents are not on the same page. They can feel it. 
you know, they know things. They just don't say certain things. But she's a little bit nervous to let her know that her mommy and daddy will not be married anymore. Now, Stacy is talking about something serious. Okay, something that's new, dear and, you know, near to her. Karen then changes the subject and says, so I want to tell you something and I'm going to, you know, take you slow when I say this. But uh, yeah, the heifers think you boring. <laughs> Oh my goodness. No, Mia says that she's boring. Not everybody else. Okay. She said that she was boring after she got through skinning and grinning in her face. That's why I don't like fake people. You sat there and skinning her. I don't do tasteless. I don't do classless. Whole time you get in front of Karen and say that she's uninteresting. Now, I don't think she's boring, but personally, that's just me. She's just warming up. Also, if we really want to be real, it's a lot of boredom in this group. If y'all ain't talking about each other, y'all ain't talking about nothing. Nobody is more boring than old TikTok and Ashley. Giselle ain't got nothing going on outside the Etch Sketch house and them kids. Wendy, what are you doing this season? <laughs> and Wendy, I like you, but what are we being? The, the butcher, the baker, or the candlestick maker? Like, what is really, Karen, what are you doing? We ain't seen you do nothing since they dropped that pizza off at that door in Potomac. What are any of you doing that make you so special and unique and so outgoing and so jazzy? Nothing. Okay, so she's not boring. She's just new. Moving forward. Stacy looked at her like, I beg your finest pardon. Who? Girl, I know you ain't saying I'm boring. Girl, I know you are lying. Karen, you lied to this lady right in this moment, though. Talking about, yeah, it was a general consensus that you were boring. Stacy told Karen, girl, I am not boring. I'm just positive. And you know what, Stacy? You are irritating their messy spirits. And I wouldn't take anything Leah says seriously. And yes, I said Leah. She liked to lie, so I replaced the M with an L. Leah likes to lie, and I will not listen to anything that she has to say, and that's just me. So they all get on this boat, and they're heading to dinner. Now, Karen got this woman walking into dinner thinking everybody thinks she's boring, and that's not cool. But you know, Stacy, child, her head in the clouds. She don't even know what day it is. The three new ladies are on one side. They're talking. Stacy is asking Kiana, who aren't you close to in this group? She, she says, Ashley, she's like, you know, she did apologize about the incident, but I just really wasn't ready to accept it. Of course, we find out what well, we all know that she pressed charges against Deborah as she should. On the other side, Ashley is bringing up this picture that she saw of Mia and the brother husbands and the kids on New Year's Eve at this exact same Airbnb. So they be renting it frequently. So Mia said, you know, Gordon is sometimes cool with being under the same roof and then sometimes he's not and they are still married let me tell y'all something okay Mia starts talking about the manic episodes that G has I don't know why but I don't want to hear Mia's explanation because nothing is ever the truth it's all make-believe she lives in a fable it's a fairy tale I don't know what is real and what is not. She got timelines. She moving down to North Carolina with ink, but then she was in Miami dipping it and doing it. She was over. And I don't know what is going on with Mia, but I don't like to listen to her give explanations because it makes my head hurt. Mia is confusing the mess out of them kids and she needs to keep ink away until the ink dries on her damn divorce papers. Let that man go until you get this stuff settled. Moving forward. Over on the other side, Kay, Stacy, and Jazzy, they're talking, and so Kay brings up hearing that Stacy was dating. So Stacy says, Yeah, Ashley said, Stacy is getting a divorce. She got a new man, and I didn't like the energy from it. Now, Stacy, she didn't say it like that. She didn't say Stacy has a new man, she's getting a divorce. She didn't. So then Ashley stands up and she tells Stacy to stop saying it like that because that's not how she said it. However, you said it though, Ashley. However, it was said, it was said, and it was not your place to say it. She don't appreciate it, period. You shouldn't have said nothing. You always talking. Then when it comes back on you, you're confused. The way you said it implied it. So they get up and they go over there because, you know, Ashley, she talking. Stacy is telling them that she didn't think that she would be getting a divorce and she has a wonderful man who loves her. And Ashley basically reduced him. Uh, Stacy, baby, that man reduced himself. He didn't even know you were in the room next to that trainer. <laughs> He didn't even know you were there. You asked that man on a scale of one to 10, how bad do you want to have sex with me? And he gave you an alphabet. Baby, not even a number. So therefore, in thus and such, it wasn't a reduction. You got to be inflated to be reduced. And baby, wasn't nothing going on but the rent. And I don't even know if that's going on. Moving forward. 
So Giselle jumping in per usual, honey, because she got to say something. Otherwise, she ain't going to get a check. Talking about, but no, you said that Ashley was messy, messy. Like, that's really what got to Ashley. Here go, Ashley. I mean, she just met me. How was she knowing messy? Girl, I can look at you and tell you messy. I can look at that Timu outfit and tell you messy. So, I, the girl, I, everything about it just looks messy. You are messy. She'd be ready to talk about everybody else's business. But let you ask something about Michael. I'm really not privy to say. I really don't know. I'm really not privy, girl. Anyway, Stacy then says, you know, my man is a devout Christian, so there's no sex, and I haven't had sex in a year. Giselle talking about, I, this she getting the confessional. I was married to a man that loved God, and there was a lot of sex going on. Oh, baby, we know. <laughs> oh, baby, we know. He had the congregation rocking, honey, so don't come a-knocking. I don't know why you even brought him up. I would never use Jamal Bryant as an example of anything. And when I say anything, I mean nothing. Yes, he loves G-O-D, but he gets down, okay, with everybody and their mama. So, therefore, and thus and such, please don't bring that man up. That's not the same. Stacy said, yes, girl, but, you know, you've been in my house with your bunions on my counter. I just thought that we were getting to know each other. Girl, she ain't got no home training. So, then Karen brings up the group calling Stacy boring, okay? We done transitioned into that. Wendy said, no, it was Mia that was calling you boring. So, then Mia comes out of her face and says, Oh, we had a conversation and we all kind of agreed that you're uninteresting. Now, as I heard Mia say this, I was just thinking Mia really let those people that were gassing her up last season get to her head and inflate her. I ain't forgot. <laughs> I have not forgotten what Mia represents and what she has done. Because I feel like that was rude and it was unnecessary. Now, everybody was hoisting Mia up on their shoulders. Like, yeah, Mia giving us the real. The last two minutes of the finale last season, she gave nothing last season. Now, everybody's like, oh, Mia this and Mia that. So now you're going to sit in this woman's face and call her uninteresting? Okay, girl. Now, I would have told Mia where to go and how to get there. But Stacy was just like, yeah, no, I'm not boring. And she just smiled. Chum. It's giving Miss America. Moving forward. So they finally get back to the house. It's time for dinner. After getting there and sitting down at the table and they get their cocktails, Giselle brings up how Karen isn't being a friend to her, even though she's being a good friend to Karen. All right, well, let's get into it then. Giselle said, let me drop this bum before I get on back to the house. Karen then says, well, you know, I needed my friends that day as well. So I invited them, but I also told them to go to both of our events. You know, you asked me what day it was going to be, and I told you I didn't know. Karen. The lie detector test determined that is a lie. Ma'am, the rollback is saying that that's a lie. You told her that your event was on Friday early in the day and you would not miss hers. Karen, just own it. You just lying to be lying. You know exactly what you were doing when you did it. Now, she apologized about not being there because it was in honor of her father. And then she tried to throw a little joke in there and throw Giselle off or whatever was going on. But I feel like Giselle was really serious about the conversation. She told Karen that she wants them to work on their communication. And girl, anyway, Giselle leaves and some of Mia's friends show up. And I said, oh, not Giselle leaving before the food is served. Because I mean, we know she like to eat, be messy and eat. So they're at the table. The friends are there now. Giselle is gone. The conversation has been had. Karen just act like she ain't hear nothing about it. And they're at the table and Mia wants them to tell a funny story about her so that they can get to know the friends. Now, I'm telling y'all right now, at this moment, it was getting a little too Mia focused for me. I don't like a Mia heavy episode. I just don't. So I was not enjoying Mia, 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 Mia. I was not. <laughs> I just wasn't enjoying it. So one of them said a funny story that she has is when Ink sucked Mia's toes at the table. Now, according to Mia, they in the middle of eating dinner and he decided to take her horse divers and put them in his mouth. That is disgusting. Freak and fraud. They're declassing the show. <laughs> Baby, they're declassing the show. No, ma'am, Pam. Moving forward. So then one of them said she met Mia when she was getting married to G. She was helping her pick out her dress and plan things. And for those of you that don't know, Mia was actually on an episode of Say Yes to the Dress. So she been clawing and scratching and trying to get on TV. So then Jacqueline goes, well, I knew Mia before she was even born. And then when she was born, we used to eat pork and beans and shop at the Payless. <laughs> <laughs> now she ain't exactly. 
exactly say that. But she did say Mia had a pinto or something like that. Mia had a hatchback and had some rims on it. Child, I don't know. Okay, all I know is Jacqueline was fighting every night to prove her love, baby. She wants to be Mia's one and only friend. Girl, we know you are Mia's friend. Congratulations. Okay, would you like a cookie? Congratulations. So then Mia segues into a funny story that she has. Now, y'all get this. Mia says Joy and Karen and herself, they all went out. Karen then leaves, but she butt dialed them. And she's saying in the background that they think she's with Ray, but she's with another man. Ooh, wait. I cannot wait to see Karen crook that mouth. Because, you know, when she crook that mouth up and the mouth gets to quivering a little bit right at the corner. I cannot wait to see her crook that mouth up and start that Carly red. It was all a lie. I cannot wait. <laughs> I can't wait. Baby, I could tell it had some truth to it. Because even the hairs on Karen's wig started to stand on end. I said, oh, baby, not the false hair standing up. Baby, you know it's a fool when the fake hair standing up. And that was the end of the episode. Child, I can't wait to see what Miss Karen going to say, honey. Because this right here going to be a mess. And then Giselle going to come back acting all confused. So wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me get this straight. So they saying you were with another man. Girl, anyway. Y'all comment down below. Tell me exactly what you thought about this episode. I did think that it was light. And you know, lighthearted. And the dynamics have changed. It does feel a lot lighter. But I don't like the sole focus being on Mia. I just don't like that. There's something about that just don't sit well in my spirit. And I just didn't like it too tough. But that's just me. Y'all comment down below, tell me exactly what you thought, comment, and I'm going to comment back. Please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And as always, stay safe, stay blessed, spread love, not germs. Peace.